Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here as ever on episode two of working on a cavalry saber. Now, this is not day two. This is now day four or so. We spend one day trying to make our own half steel from Montana wagon tire, and we were working on that yesterday. Sadly, we've run into some hiccups. Before I explain those hiccups, let me thank our sponsor, which is NordVPN. It's an online virtual private network service that keeps you safe while you're browsing the internet, and you watching this can get 75% off a three-year plan when you go to my link in the description, nordvpn.com forward slash forge. You can have up to six connections at a time. It's amazing. Be sure to get that at the end of the video because when you use code forge at checkout, you're also going to get one month for free. Thank you, NordVPN, for sponsoring the video. Let me tell you about the hiccups. So, yesterday, we took our steel as forged out and refined after having that bloom. We refined it, we forged it, and we spark tested it, and it sparked just like wrought iron. That was a big problem. So what we decided is we were going to take those pieces of hearth, now iron, was steel, since we found out that we uh, decarburized out all of the carbon out of our iron. Um, we think it has something to do with the phosphor content in the wrought iron itself. Either way, we decided that we we're going to mix it in with some 15N20 and 1080 steel so that we could make a billet of Damascus where the carbon content would migrate across and end up with a really, really nice piece of sword steel. So that is the hope. And so we have a lot of Damascus forging to do today, and I'm thrilled to bring you along as we hopefully get ourselves a little closer to one beautiful sword. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you enjoy. Okay, I have the billet forged out. Now, those pieces over there that we need to match it to, they're about 42 millimeters wide, so I forged this piece about 43 millimeters wide. It's about an inch and three quarters wide by three eighths of an inch thick. 43, 10 mil thick, 12 mil thick probably, but it's a little proud of the calipers, which means that once we grind it all off, it's gonna fit together nicely in this stack right here three times adding a pretty considerable amount of heft to this thing. It's cooling down slowly so that it'll grind easily, so that it'll cut easily. Oh, I'm pleased to be making Damascus because making Damascus is just so much fun. Over here, Will has been working away on the actual design because we need a design. With multiple people working on the project, it's just essential that we have it designed out well and that we all work to dimensions and drawings. Back when I've been working on things in the past myself, I just been able to wing it and make it as I go from the dimension of the piece as it ends up, but uh, we can't have that happen here. We need to have an actual design, just like the Viking sword. We need to be able to work to it and uh, hopefully not modify it too, too much as we go, um, because it's going to make it difficult when we have to change things on the fly. So how is it going over here? What's the idea? Uh, well, it's, it's going all right. It's, it's very difficult to freehand sketch out a such a gentle curve over a long area. So it's taking a little while to get it uh, to just a basis from where we can fine tune it. And you're uh, talking about the actual blade itself. That's just, what you're drawing right now. Just the blade. We've got a couple other sketches for the handle and guard and stuff like that. But right now, just focusing on the blade uh, and getting a nice, nice curve in there. You know what I think we could do to help with that curve? Hmm. I think if we were to take a piece of thin flat stock or a long ruler and we were to give it a slight bend, one of us could give it a slight bend and we could then put an arc on the paper that works together with it. Well, and it might give us a basis. Obviously, I don't think the thing is like a complete curve, but it might give us a better basis to work from. I don't think it's, yeah, it's not an exact curve that you're working. It's, um, it's a compound curve. 
so it's not not the same radius the entire way along which makes it very difficult which sword are you working to do you have a photo the only blade that we have is that one so this is what he's working to is this photo here and it looks like most of the curve is really kind of right in the middle that's where it's the biggest curve yeah so what we could maybe do is we take our piece and we hold it at about each quarter mark and then give it a little bit of a flex give it a yeah should we give that an idea? Should we give that a go? Sure. Okay, so we've got a piece of quarter inch rod. I reckon it's about like that. Looks like we've got most of the curve about here. I think that looks good. It's a little flatter here. It is a little bit, I think. That's good. Ready? Yep. Okay, we need to rub out that line. We couldn't see anything. This line was too thick here. All right. It's a good place to work from. So it looks like we're just going to have to put a little more time in on this drawing. Spent a lot more time designing, and in the meanwhile, you saw Colin prepped up the billet for the next well. Right now, where we stand with those nine pieces, each at about 40 to 50 layers, we now have a piece that has about 400 to 450 layers. We're gonna pull her out, we're gonna let it cool down. Once it's cool, we're gonna grind it, we're gonna cut it, we're gonna restack it, tack weld it together, and re weld it to get about 800 to 900 layers total, which should be just very nice for a beautiful ladder pattern on the blade. Nice and thick too. I didn't want to draw it out too far. I wanted to weld it while there was still a lot of material to move, so our last weld is as tight and secure as possible. Interrupting all of this, today is the day that the Bridgeport and the lathe arrive again. The truck, oh, the truck disappeared. There's a truck on the road that's here for us. It's not this truck over there, but we got a truck. They look to be in good condition. That's the truck. <laughs> the bill and the later hair. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Don't they look beautiful, Will? It looks very nice. And off we go. <laughs> Let's stop right there. Let's do that. Yes, sir. Gotta get a ratchet strap. Okay, we need a ratchet strap so we can better secure it. Here we go. Got a bridge port and a lathe. <laughs> there we go, that'll do just perfectly. Thank you, sir. The mill and the lathe are here. Are you as happy as I am? I'm so freaking happy right now. Woo! This is just phenomenal. I've got my lathe. I've got my mill, it? my bridge port. This is refurbished. It just looks beautiful. We've got the DRO on it right over there. A power feed on it. Fabulous. Just fantastic. Can't wait to get this stuff off the crate and start working on it. While we were getting uh, this stuff uncrated, Colin has ground the faces of that piece of steel, ready for us to give the steel a little clean, face it back together like this, and clamp it up, ready to be tack welded together. But have a look at this. Will has taken a piece, he's ground it. So, as you can see, we've got the dark layers and the light layers, and what that is, is the light bands is the iron that we made, and the dark layers is all the Damascus that's in there, so the 1080 and the 15 and 20 So what steel. you can't see is that in here is our very fine high layer count steel. Did we really make it if we turned it from wrought iron into wrought iron? We put lots of effort in it and we get an A star for effort. How about that, Will? <laughs> I think we should at least give ourselves a participation trophy on this one. That's true, we did have just a flag of a time doing it. It was just an absolute banner. <laughs> we 
We got it tack welded up. It is. Into the forge we go. We're going to let that heat up. That is going to be the last forge weld on this sword blade. Fingers crossed. All goes well. It's time to fire up the hammer and get this thing welded and drawn out. Bolt. problem here. Uh-oh. This is not good. This is a uh, serious problem. It looks like our material, this entire layer up here, has not fused. Now this is from a weld prior to this. A while ago, yeah. This is a weld way back. Probably you should start grinding on it before we do anything else. Just try and grind through all that stuff. That's what I do. Yeah. I just straighten this up and then grind the daylight out of it. Just whack it twice right now and then, yeah. gonna do is we're gonna try and put this under the microscope see how those cracks look there oh wow that's scary you see the tip of this graver here right there that's worrying you can see quite clearly where is the band of iron oh that's the angle right there have a look at that this is not good to find these impurities within those bands of iron it is not good at all and so what we've decided that we would do is we would forge out a small little knife from that material which will did that knife was then ground it was then heat treated and it was then polished and still those impurities are in there and we want to make a really fabulous piece of work and so it's pretty sad to say but we're gonna to have to stop on this billet of steel we're gonna to have to start with new material. We're gonna have to start our steel all over again. We're gonna round out the video with getting the lathe off the pallet and in place and thanking our sponsor. It is always a pleasure to bring you along. It's a shame that we're starting again on the material, but let's thank NordVPN because they help keep us safe online while we're browsing the internet. NordVPN is a virtual private network. They have servers all around the world that act as an intermediary between you and the websites that you browse, helping you keep safe while you're online helping keep your data safe. It looks a little like this. The Bridgeport is the website that you want to browse. You are the lathe. And so you, the lathe, just like this, true Montana style, you rope yourself a Bridgeport, you dally off on the tailstock, you tighten yourself up, and you tell that website, hey, Mr. Website or Mr. Bridgeport, I want some of that information that you got. And so the Bridgeport sends the information down the rope down to you and you see what the website has to offer but the trouble is if you are a terrible mean hacker this is very easy to intercept uh oh that's the deadly hacker with the axe they'll intercept it and you can have a lot of very important information compromised it's very very dangerous now this is where NordVPN comes in. They have servers, just like this here handy toolbox. They've got over a thousand servers. And what they will do when you get NordVPN, you can get 75% off a three-year plan when you go to nordvpn.com forward slash forge and free month when you use code forge. They're gonna access the website on your behalf and then they're gonna encrypt the data for you. So it's gonna look a little more like this. You, the lathe over here, you tell NordVPN what you wanna see from the bridge port, then this happens. NordVPN accesses the site for you, gets the stream of information, encrypts it in whichever server you want it to do it, and send it on to you, where with their handy dandy app available for iOS, Android, and PC and Mac, where it gets unencrypted and where you can browse. It's amazing. You can have up to six connections at a time, which means that, you know, you can get NordVPN for you and your family members. And don't forget, you're gonna get 75% off a three-year plan when you go to nordvpn.com forward slash forge, as well as getting a month for free when you use code forge. Thank you, NordVPN, for sponsoring the video. Thank you guys for coming along. Hopefully, we have better luck with this billet tomorrow. Will and I are gonna get these machines in place. I'm gonna see you on the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>